Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. An update on the altcoin situation and their crashing, their little silent crash that we've been talking about over the last few weeks. That along with Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance. So let's dive into some of the news today, the charts and update this whole crash situation as the market continues to die out, get boring and go quiet. So remember what to do first, hit that subscribe button. There are plenty of you that haven't subscribed yet and are watching the videos. Like the video up, hit that bell notification icon as well. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, daily Q and A's, and of course the free investor newsletter, which you can find a link to down below. Let's dive in. If you're just joining the party now, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about altcoins bleeding out. It's not a dip that I'm looking to buy for many, many reasons. You can check out these videos here of the last few days, plus over the last week or two, we've been looking at that specifically of the altcoin against its Bitcoin value, not only its USD value, but its Bitcoin value. The whole idea here is to reduce risk. And if you want to understand that a little more, definitely go and check out these last couple of videos, which I go into a lot of depth on and give you a bit of a guide of laid out plan as to how I see the markets. And so altcoins looking here to continue falling. It's not a FUD title. If you see those guys in the comments, they haven't understood the video. They don't understand what it is they're doing. And they probably shouldn't be in the space if they consider every piece of news to be FUD. So just be aware of those, especially if you're new in the space and you're wondering what it's all about. Let's discuss it right now. So what I'm looking at here is total two. You can use TradingView. Link to this is down below. This is to check the charts out. Essentially, we're just looking at the data. As I've talked about many times before, don't let the facts influence your FUD. It's your own thoughts in your mind when you are claiming someone else is fudding that old mutter fudder out there so really just take a step back and think about what you're what you're about to write or think look at what the chart's telling us we are now bumbling around on our 50 percent zone of our total of total two so this is our covid crash the china pandemic crash and this is our current top set back in may now we're hitting around this 50 percent level we do have it on log doesn't really matter uh, and we're finding some support at the moment, but again, volume's drying out, and this is going to be the same for the rest of the charts. You can see the volume drying up in the markets. You can see it drying up on YouTube, Twitter. Views are down, comments are down, likes are down, subs are down. This is all part of the market sentiment, which I fortunately have a very close insight to obviously being on YouTube, I can see those analytics come through time and time again. You can also check this for yourself. Just go through some of the main channels that you follow and look at the views over the last few days to few weeks and months. You can see how much it has plummeted. And I'll probably do another video on this, but it's really the worst thing that retail can do. They get bored. They're not gambling. They, their gambling tokens aren't making money, so they leave the space. They come back when things get exciting again because they're used to the emotions getting all fluttered and jittered because they don't have a plan. Their plan is to put their money where their emotions tell them to do it. The old gut feel when they haven't uh, basically programmed their gut feel. They haven't taught their gut feel what it actually means. And you're only going to get this from being with the market long term. It could be years. It can be months. But you need to be with it and have a plan to understand what that gut feel actually is. So this is what we're seeing. We're seeing retail leave the space and I suspect we'll probably break down here over the next few days or weeks. And my next targets, I've got my alerts set just in case that happens, are at the 61% drop from the high. This is our FIB level, our FIB retracement. But if you're going to measure it from here, somewhere around a 60% drop down to about that $600 billion mark, which has come in for support back in March. So that's what I'm seeing with altcoins for Bitcoin itself, we've got total, which uh, includes all of the market cap of Bitcoin and all of the cryptocurrencies, whereas total two, which we just looked at, that's just the altcoins, everything except Bitcoin. And so if this thing falls down as well, this is the 50% zone that we've been looking at at 1.34. But if this crashes through to the next support zone, that's about at a trillion dollar market cap for the total cryptocurrencies. So I think that could be a pretty reasonable level to expect it to fall, especially this volume. You can just see it just drying up and drying up. And this doesn't look like a chart that is ready to get going just yet. Um, this is a good thing. A lot of people see this as very scary. Yes, your portfolios may drop 30% from here. I'm just throwing numbers out here looking at where we currently are at 1.45 to the trillion dollar mark. If I drop that down 
that's about 30% drop. And from that point, I would love to see a, a accumulation or at least a bounce back into these these price levels uh, that we set on those major crashes. So I'm not overly concerned. It's just a good piece of a healthy correction. And that's the next piece of the puzzle that I'm waiting for. Bitcoin, not much has happened yesterday. Nothing much today. Nothing much. I expect, and this would be for Bitcoin. This would be for altcoins. What I'm waiting for is probably some sort of relief, just a little bit of a bounce. We've had one, two, three, four days down so far, a little inside day so far at the moment. So four days down now and inside, get a little bit of a move up. I'd be expecting that, but I'm not going to be getting overly excited for that little move up. It just, it's just what happens. People have had shorts in, need to cover their, their positions, buy back a little bit. The 50% from that is at about 38,000. So even if it got to 37, 37 and a half, I'm still not getting overly excited. I want to see the market move up and then come back and retest those levels. So Bitcoin, not much is happening at this point. Should we break down from there? I would expect us to come back into these lower 30,000 zones, which I'm quite excited for. I want to see the fear and greed index come back into the 15 or under so we can continue adding to our Bitcoin fear and greed plan. So far, we're currently sitting at about an average of 35 and a half K and it would be lovely to get that average down and down and down so that when the market goes up, we have bigger returns on the way up rather than buying at 50s and 60,000s back in March, April, May when the rest of the crypto YouTube and crypto Twitter were going nuts over a 5 or a 10% increase on Bitcoin. It was looking very tired and we've documented that on the channel, which you can go back and check out if you want to get some extra learning on board. So this is our Bitcoin fear and greed plan. Uh, looking at the fear and greed, we have not seen a purchase time just yet. What they've got here is the cont uh, continues is the name of the Chinese venture firm. Investment thesis is heavily in influenced by the idea that DeFi will continue to grow and be a driving force in crypto. Then Tom, the firm is left hand L1, so layer one protocols, Ethereum's, etc. And right hand is DeFi. So they suspect that we're going to have a lot more investment into cryptocurrency. I also think that if this is actually what they're doing, great. You know, this is just going uh, along with the bullish narrative coming forward for crypto. Here's an article on the US dollar and Bitcoin. Basically, data suggests the strong US dollar makes Bitcoin weaker argument is flawed. They don't have to work inversely. It doesn't have to be that one is up, the other is down. They can both be up at the same time. And this is just going through the details. I bring this up because it is often a point that's brought up as one of these hidden secrets. So just be aware of it. It doesn't have to work like that. Looking at US regulations and current China crackdown on mining and trading activities seem vital to Bitcoin's recent underperformance. I think that might be the case as well, especially with China. Now, Miami is trying to lure in the Chinese Bitcoin miners. I don't think this is going to happen. It would be nice. They might get some mining happening over in Miami, but just with the cost of power, I think it's going to keep them out of Miami, if I'm being completely honest. Kazakhstan looks like it's a contender. Charges between $0.03 cents and $0.3, .3 cents per kilowatt hour. So I think that is going to help them out a lot more. And of course, Kazakhstan is a lot closer than the US. So they've got to get their equipment over to Kazakhstan so much easier than, than the US as well. I think that's a big one to keep in mind, especially if the whole narrative starts to shift towards Miami as a, a Bitcoin mining city. I highly doubt it, especially with the heat in Miami. Nonetheless, I think this is very good news. This is much better news in my opinion than having to try and cart everything to Miami and get in there. Kazakhstan, I think if they see this opportunity, they could very much take it. Got a lot of power over there. Uh, I think this is going to be pretty good news and this is going to be the stuff that we, we will see before it actually comes to the mainstream. So you start to see these guys getting into Kazakhstan or maybe neighboring countries. That's what I'm holding out for. That's what I'm looking for in the news. More good news. 98% of hedge fund CFOs expect to invest in cryptocurrencies by 2026. This is from a study and the study is from InterTrust Group. It's not just a made up study. Hedge funds will increase their cryptocurrency allocations to 7%. So a recent study revealed according to a new survey from InterTrust. We just saw that. Nearly 20% of CFOs believe their organizations will allocate at least 10% of all holdings in various digital assets. That's pretty big news, even if they get half of that. They're saying it now. Maybe they did this study back in 
February, March when everything was going absolutely nuts and now all these CFOs are scared and they don't and we get half of it, that's still pretty big big numbers considering we weren't even expecting these sort of numbers only six to 12 months ago. Another piece here, 90% of British independent financial advisors would never recommend digital assets to clients. We've seen this before and eventually they flip and we know that financial advisors generally don't know that much about investing or financial advice. I'm just just saying, I've, I've heard it, I've seen it myself. You guys can let me know if you've actually gone to see a financial advisor and what have they advised you and how that has worked out for you. I'd love to hear that in the comments down below. Of course, just my opinion. I hope no one gets too triggered over that. But we've seen this before, a financial advisor saying no to cryptocurrency. Then when it's hot, they'll advise it. And that's the completely wrong way to go about investing. 29% of crypto investors in the UK check their balance every day, study finds. So people in the UK are more interested in Bitcoin and crypto today than any other year, including 2017, which was an extremely hot year. So they're more interested in it today. And this was a recent survey as well. So the survey, as I've looked at here, published 17th of June, very recent, that shows that about 78% of adults have now heard of cryptocurrency. Eight, four in five people, I was going to say eight, 80, 80 out of 100. So we've got a lot of people looking at cryptocurrencies. More than 2.3 million in uh, people in the UK hold or have owned cryptocurrency at some point. Again, pretty decent numbers for people who have actually taken the step to be buying cryptos. This is only increasing and that is the trend that we're seeing. We do need corrections. This is the long-term use of news and fundamental analysis that I use it for so that I can then see on a chart. Great, good times to buy because my long-term outlook is very, very bullish. Venture Capital has poured $17 billion into crypto in 2021, nearly equal to all other years combined. More money pouring into cryptocurrency this year. Yes, we have some corrections, but long term, the trend is still mega bullish. Will we get a three-year bear market? I don't think so. I think we're probably more suited to something like we saw in 2019. So in 2019, we had a big, fast run out of these lows. Uh, that were back in 2018 and then we just went straight up into $14,000 Bitcoin and then went si uh, well basically sideways and broke some lows and then we had the move up again. I think we might see something like this and we've talked about being underneath this all-time high for three to nine-ish months, maybe 12 months but at the moment I've got to have a bit of a round figure and I'm saying about six to nine months because we're currently two months under and I don't see us coming back in a month's time to this all-time high. So yeah, six to nine months, we'll continue to track it. But as long as we have an idea of where we're going from here, it keeps us sane and we are not going ballistic over every 5% fall in the market. Just like we saw over the last 48 hours, there was about a 5.9% fall. Next thing you know, market has pulled up a little bit. Obviously, we'll continue to follow it from here. So make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and of course, on, on the channel here as you like the video and subscribe to the channel. For the Aussie guys, make sure you check out New Brighton Capital. Link to that is in the description down below to get your SMSF, your superannuation set up into an SMSF before the end of financial year. Link down below again, $300 credit when you use that link. So make sure you do that. Get your 20 minute free call. Get ready for that new financial year. Start 1st of July. While you're down there, everyone else, join the newsletter free once every two weeks, looking at crypto, stocks, property, everything to do with the cycle so you can learn more and feel safe and confident, stress-free in your investing. I hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, hit that like, subscribe, etc. Until next time. Have more fun to get more done.